Hello everyone, and welcome to another Eng130 video tutorial. As always, my name is Clayton, and I'll be the guide through this video tutorial today. So we have an, another example of 3D Cartesian vector notation. And since I'm doing two extra examples, this should kind of hint to you guys, hey, this, this stuff's pretty important. Maybe I should figure it out. So the example today is nice because the, the, the question's kind of weird. The diagram looks kind of funny. And usually it's stuff like this that messes a lot of students up on the midterm is they see some weird geometry and then they start freaking out and they don't realize how easy it is. It's actually really easy, a really easy example, but they look at it, kind of freak out a bit. And uh, I just want to show you uh, things may look hard, but they're actually really easy. So let's begin. All right, so looking at this example, it says the loaded A creates a force of 60 pounds in wire AB. Express this force as a Cartesian vector acting on A and directed towards B as shown. So the example, like I said, it's, it's not that hard, but when you look at this figure, it's like, holy crap, what the, what the heck's going on here? But it's very simple because we know what we have to do to get Cartesian vector notation. We have to know the magnitude of the force, but if we look at this, we already know it. It's 60 pounds here. So let's just write that real quick. It's nice to write everything that we have so we know the magnitude of F is 60 pounds. So for those of you who forget, pounds is basically the same as newtons. It's just an American convention. Uh, a lot of people get pounds confused with mass. Uh, a pound is not a mass. Mass in the States is actually a really disgusting unit. And I think it's called a slug. I'm not too sure, but the units are just awful. So a pound is not the same as a kilogram. That's all I'm trying to say. A pound is the same as a newton. So we know that the magnitude of F is 60 pounds. And we know that... It's in wire AB, so it starts at this point down here, and it works its way up to here. So that's what we know, and we have to express this force in Cartesian vector notation. So the best way to do that, of course, is going to be your coordinate points. So we got two points here, A and B, and this is actually really simple once you kind of know what you're doing. So we're going to start with A. So we're going to look at A, and the first thing we want to see is well, how far is A going down the x-axis? And we see, well, A is actually not down the x-axis at all. So the first coordinate point at A is going to be 0. And we check how far it goes down the y-axis. And again, just like the x, it's 0. And then finally, we check how far it goes up the vertical axis. But we realize quickly it actually goes down the vertical axis by 10 feet. So we're going to put A as negative 10. And the units for this, of course, are feet. Alrighty, so there's one coordinate point, so how bad can this be? So coordinate B, oh, well, we have an angle, so we know we're going to do a little bit of trigonometry here. So what we can do is we can create a triangle that'll look like as so. And we can start with X, so we want to see how far it goes down the X axis. So it's going to be 5 times the sine of 30 degrees. And we have to also check to make sure it's direction. So it is going, well, I guess, downward on this page, which is with the positive x-axis. So that is a positive value, which is good. And then, of course, the corresponding y value is going to be 5 times the cosine of 30 degrees. And it also is going along with the positive y-axis. And this is not uh, negative or positive z, so the z value is just going to be 0 and that bracket, and of course it has units of feet. So once you figure this part out, the rest is just following the steps you guys already know. So with these coordinates, we can create a position vector. With the position vector, we can create the magnitude, uh, determine the magnitude of that position vector. So that, uh, once again, if we determine the magnitude of AB, position vector AB, that's going to be this purple length here. That's the actual length of that wire. And then finally, with that position vector and its magnitude, we can find a unit vector, which will then finally help us solve for uh, a Cartesian vector notation force. But uh, let's just go back to the beginning steps that I say. So we want position vector from A to B. So we're going to go position vector A, B. And again, it's not the coordinates of A minus the coordinates of B. We start off with the last coordinate, so R, B, and we're going to subtract the coordinates of A. So we take our final position and we subtract our initial position. 
So if we do that, what's going to happen is we're going to get a vector, position vector, and we're going to start with the coordinates of B. So we're going to go 5 times the sine of 30. That's going to be our first coordinate. And since it's minus 0, I'm just going to leave that out. So this is in the I direction. And then we're going to go plus 5 times the cosine of 30. And also this is going to be minus 0. So I'm just going to leave that out as well. And that's in the J direction. And then we're going to go 0 minus negative 10. So it's going to be actually positive 10 in the K direction. And since this is a, a position vector, it has units of length. And the length in our case is feet. So we're just going to have to put the, the feet at the end. So now that we have our position vector, what we can do is we can solve for the magnitude of it, which is going to be all those components on the inside squared. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the magnitude of AB is going to be equal to, and then we're going to have the nice square root sine, so it's going to be 5 times sine of 30. And the only reason why I'm going 5 times sine of 30 rather than its actual value is just a lot of decimal places I don't really know where I should cut off and it becomes kind of a pain for me so I, I just like doing this so plus 5 times cosine of 30 squared and then plus 10 squared. So this right here is how we find the magnitude of this position vector. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the magnitude RAB and that right there, once we type it into our calculator, is going to be 11.18 feet. 11.18 feet. So what's nice about this, the 11.18 feet, as I was saying, the length of that purple line now, we know is 11.18 feet. That's what the magnitude represents. It's that one 11.18 feet long. So our next step, since we know both the position vector along with its magnitude, we can find the unit vector from A to B, so unit vector AB, and all we're going to do is we're going to take our position vector, so RAB, and we're going to divide it by the magnitude of that position vector. So RAB, the magnitude, and we can draw a nice line. So what this is going to be equal to, it's a unit vector, aka vector, so we're going to have to use those squiggle brackets. It's going to be 5 times the sine of 30. 5 times the sine of 30, and this is going to be divided by its magnitude, so 11.18, and that's the I direction, plus 5 times cosine of 30, and that's going to be also divided by the magnitude, so 11.18, and that's in the J direction. And then we finish off this with the K direction, so plus 10 divided by 11.18, and that's in the k direction. Ta -da. So this right here is our unit vector. And the reason why we can use this unit vector for the force is because the force goes along the same line. So this line here that goes all the way kind of forever, this line of action is what it's called. The force goes along that same line of action as the position vector, which is why we're allowed to say that the unit vector for those two is the same. Because recall that the unit vector is just a direction, and they both go in the same direction. All right, so what happens is now we can find our force vector. So F, oops, go back to here. F, A, B, and this is the vector we want. It's going to be the magnitude, so I'm just going to put the magnitude of F, A, B, and that's multiplied by the position vector U, A, B. So if we go up here, we know the magnitude of F, A, B is 60 pounds. It's going to be equal to, oops, be equal to 60, and then we're going to put the unit vector in. So I just converted it to decimal places to kind of help write it nicer and quicker. So 0 0.224, 0 0.224, and that's in the I direction, plus 0 0.387, that's 0 0.387, and that's in the J direction. And finally, plus 0 0.894, 0 0.894, 
plus 0 0.894. And that's in the k direction. So when we multiply those in, we're going to get another vector. So what we're doing is we're taking the 60 and multiplying by each one of those components. And what we're going to end up with is 13.4i. So again, that's just 60 multiplied by 0 0.224 plus 23.3j and then plus 53 0.7k and this and remember we now have a fourth vector so this right here has a unit and the units are newtons so now that we have the force vector it's what the question wanted i'm just going to sum everything up by saying that f a b so just kind of stating my final answer and i know it seems tedious but trust me it helps a lot and i get on everyone's good side 13.4 i plus 23.3j, so 23.3j, plus 53.7k, and the bracket, and then put the units. Oh, actually, I'm wrong. So I would have got docked marks here because the units are not newtons. We're doing the imperial, so it's actually pounds. So let's just swap those over to pounds, and then we're going to box in our answer. Perfect. So that's it. So the point of this whole thing was, one, to give you guys extra practice, but two, just to tell you guys, don't be worried about weird geometry. Like this is a hoop supporting a barrel of coal with a couple of wires. Like it's, it's really, really weird. I'm just saying, don't be worried about it. Uh, the steps are always the same. And this is what they try and do in engineering. And they're going to give you something that just looks so strange to you guys that they hope it confuses you. But in the end, all the steps are going to be simple steps. It's the steps that you learn. It's just it might catch you off guard at first. But then you just read the question, state what you know, and then just follow what you know. And you guys will do great if you, uh, if you do that. So thanks, everybody, again for listening. And uh, in the next example, we'll start to get to some more uh, interesting stuff. Uh, we're done with the extra practice. We're going to get into more interesting concepts. So... Uh, thanks everybody again for listening and I'll see you guys in the next video.